Hello there. This is Beth Green, otherwise known as Granny Rocks, and this is Jane, Sweet Baby James Maynard, otherwise known as Sweet Baby James. <laughs> Sweet Baby James Maynard, otherwise known as Sweet Baby James Maynard. <laughs> Correct. Okay, tonight it's night here. It may not be night where you are. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the topic, does honesty have a future or even a present? And does self-honesty have a chance? Oh, my God. Give self-honesty a chance. <laughs> okay, so hang in there because I'm going to be answering uh, that question. And Helen says, Helen is here. Hi, Beth and James. Hello, Hello, Hello Helen. Hello. So good to see you. And Bob says, hi, Beth and James. Hi, Bob. Hello, hello. So welcome to Granny Rocks Our World, otherwise known as GROW, where Granny shares her wit, wisdom, and uncommon sense to help uh, elucidate, clarify uh, matters that uh, Matter. we probably haven't been thinking very deeply about. <laughs> uh, this, this theme reminds me of the Billy Joel song, Honesty is such a lonely word. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> So, did you say that we were here twice a week already? We are here twice a week. <laughs> we're here now. That's once. Okay, that's Monday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. So, stay with us and keep coming back. And stay tuned. And Elizabeth said, hello, Beth and James. Lulu is here, too. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. So, well, okay. Many of us have been afraid to be honest about anything. Amy says, hi, great topic. Watching on my phone for the first time while my computer is recovering. <laughs> well, while your computer is in the hospital, we are glad to welcome your cell phone. So um, we've been afraid to say anything about society, about our families, about our friends, around our sorority, about our, our politics, class, about our, about our religion, politics, around our race, <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, and many of us have been afraid to be honest about ourselves, even to ourselves. So mm -hmm. I want to look at this topic a little bit tonight, uh, you know, just a little bit about why, but then really get into what are the consequences of not being honest about our world and ourselves? And uh, is there a turn happening? Uh-huh. Right? Is, Ooh. are we turning? Inquiry minds want to know. Indeed, we'll find out. So, Arie said, hi, Beth and James, and hello, Arie. So, obviously, you know, I don't have to go into great detail about this. Honesty about others can get us punished. You know, oh, the kid, true. right? You're a little kid and dad comes home and he's drunk again, or mom is drunk again, or whatever. And you or they're say, abusive. Yeah, right, you yeah. say, daddy, you know, you're yelling, you're drunk again. It's like, whack, you know, it could happen, right? So we get afraid to be honest, right? And you bet. Um, we don't want people to ostracize us. That mean, For those of you who are not English speakers, that means isolate us, throw us out of the group. We don't want to be fired from our jobs if we say that, oh, safety standards are not being kept up and that kind of thing. We don't want to get in trouble because something terrible might happen. You know, it happens. Terrible things do happen. The truth can hurt oneself. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that side of it. But anyway, what about... It only uh, hurts the ego. I, well, but it can hurt if you get fired or you get well, thrown out of true. your family or whatever. Yeah, you know, you yeah. say, oh, mom and dad, you know, I thought you didn't believe in racism and yet you're doing this. You know, it's like. Anyway, the other side of that is self-honesty can also be problematic for us because if we're self-honest and we share that with other people, they might exploit it. Ooh, right? Absolutely. And they might use it against us or because we may show our weakness and it might make us vulnerable and yada, da, 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 da. Okay. So why am I, so I'm asking the question, does honesty have a future and does self-honesty have a chance? And I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say, yes. Uh -huh. Now, am I right? 
if I'm going to be honest, I could say I have no idea. Yeah, but there honest. are that's honest. But there are certain signs that things may be turning around. Now, you know, in a lot of very traditional societies, and I'm not just talking about some African tribe. I mean, our own society is very traditional, right? So let's get honest about that. You know, we have certain traditions. This is the way it's done, and all of that. It's been very difficult to move the needle to get people to embrace change. Uh, and part of the reason is because we're not honest about what isn't working, right? Because if we got honest about what wasn't working, we might actually have to look for solutions. But what are the consequences of dishonesty? And they have been terrible. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of that. Then I'm going to talk about why I'm optimistic. All right. So on the personal level, for example, a lack of honesty about ourselves has fueled addiction. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's say you drink, you drink too much. Well, it's legal, isn't it? My father drank. My friends drink. My coworkers drink. There is a, it's not a problem. My drinking is not a problem, right? Well, that's dishonesty many times. That's, and so that has promoted our continuing to do something that is addictive and hurtful and can hurt everybody in our family, can hurt our health. Uh, doctors have been dishonest about drinking because many of them drink. So they didn't want to say, oh, drinking is bad or, you know. So some stuff like that, you know. So the consequences can be very, very bad on a personal level. No, I don't need anger management. Just because I beat my husband every day doesn't mean that I have an anger problem. Okay. On a social level, societal level, uh, our dishonesty has fueled global warning, warming. And uh, has anybody noticed that every year it seems to get hotter and hotter? And uh, uh, now with the wells are running dry and farmers are in trouble and India is running out of water. But see, we can be dishonest, except ultimately, can we be dishonest? I mean, how long can we lie about anything? You know. After we have liver disease, do we say, well, maybe my drinking was a little bit excessive or, you know, or maybe global warming is a little bit of a problem, right? Okay, now, our dishonesty has fueled income inequality. You know, give to the rich, take from the poor. You know, is that really working for us? Doesn't that make it more difficult for people to actually develop, evolve, get an education, be healthy, or be unstressed? I mean, are people getting their needs met? Or is this fueling more and more anxiety and upset in our populations? For example, a lack of opportunity for many people. What about the rising tensions in the world? Um, have we been noticing that? Are the fans being flamed? Flam, fl fl flames being fanned? Are the flames being fanned? Right, for the, a purpose, a, a self-centered purpose. So the ego loves dishonesty because it can keep up what it wants to do in order to run the world. However, for us, that is not a good choice. So now let's look at some of the dynamics around this. People in power. I mean, that could be people in power in the family, like the parents or the grandparents or whoever happens to have the purse string, for example, people in power in government, people in power in business, they can lie. They have been known to lie for their own purposes. But they can only lie so long before people start to notice that things that they are promoting are not working. It seems to take humanity a long time to catch up with the truth. But what can I say? That's the way it is. So, for example, increasing the prison population did not end crime. Oh, really? Right. Privatizing prisons did not improve the rate of return of prisoners. Um, 
throwing, incarcerating mass numbers of people, especially people of color, has not solved our social problems. Nope. No. So that is a big lie. That has been a big lie. And some people are saying, you know, that's a big lie. Not only are the people who are thrown into prison suffering and their families and their children and so on, but we as a society are putting a huge amount of our resources into imprisoning people rather than helping people. So that big lie may, maybe made us feel powerful at the moment, like, we're going to do this. Oh, James, we may have some comments here. Well, let's have a look. Oh, Todd said, hi, Beth and James. And hi, also, Todd. Also, Arie said, hi, Beth and James. Hi, Arie. And Larby said, hello, Beth and James and all. And all the members of the page, Granny mm -hmm. rocks the music and message of Beth Green. And he says, it's a very important topic and very important in our daily life in general. Yes. Thank you, Larby. That is so darn true. Helen says, things will be obvious eventually, sometimes too late. Oh, ho, 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 ho. It's how true that is. But those in power can only lie so long. What happens when you begin to discover that it's just one lie after another? Well, what you can do is you can lie some more. It's like, oh, it isn't true that uh, there's global warming. It's just that uh, everybody's thermostats have broken this year. <laughs> right? <laughs> and... Um, it, this isn't true, and that isn't true, and the other thing isn't true. Well, so you can try to lie more. So we can either make ourselves even more stupid and say, oh, well, you know, so-and-so says that, uh, so, oh, it's a conspiracy. Oh, that's what the problem is. It's a conspiracy. Or we can start saying, you know, maybe this is not working. Maybe giving tax breaks to the rich is not going to solve uh, the problem of getting people clean water clean food, an education, uh, well-being. Uh, yeah, maybe that, maybe that doesn't work. And maybe it's not even good for the economy because people don't have enough money to buy things with. Oh, well. So uh, dishonesty with ourselves doesn't work either. Smoking a joint or taking drugs does not make life go more smoothly. You may feel smooth in the moment, like, I don't even see the problem, what problem, right? But it doesn't mean that the problem has gone away. And so that does not work. Oppressing women has not created happiness for men. Now, that is a big lie. Well, no, what I just said isn't the lie. What I said is the truth. But the idea that men really benefit from being on top is a big lie. Now, of course, there is such a thing as, well, I get to rule the roost, and I get to decide this, and I get to decide that. But it doesn't really make men happy. If you're a man, and you have a dependent, right, that you're in charge of, that you can order around, that person, that woman, is going to be mad. Mm. She may not show it. She may not dare show it. But something in her dies. Or if she's not mad, it's because she's already gone down so far that she can't even fight back. And now what you've got, guys, is a dependent and not a partner. Mm. You get to feel superior. And this is true for races it's and religion. It's a hollow victory. It's yeah. a hollow victory. You get to feel superior. It's another ego game, right? You get to feel superior. But you don't have a partner who can go through life with you, facing the challenges together with love and mutual support. More lies, more lies. A very widespread lie. And if the man is in a situation where all of the income has to come from him, then he can't ever quit his job or go on strike, or do any of those things. He's actually weakened by the dependence of women. So that's a big lie. Helen says, such a bad trade. You are so right. So 
Now, I am claiming that uh, things are looking up. Well, why do I say that? Why do you say that? Why do I say that? Well, first of all, I read an article today. Now, you can't believe everything you read. However, it said on the topic of trade wars, restricting immigration, and racial divisiveness, it seems like more and more people are recognizing that these are not solving our problems. Can you imagine? And that the tide of opinion is going the other way. Now, we have a president who has used these issues in order to empower himself. And whether you believe him or you don't believe him, that's the what he's been doing. And yet more and more people are actually coming out on the other side. Well, when I read that, I thought, I got to say this. You know, this is very interesting. The tide is turning. The tide is turning. Maybe people are realizing that these things are not helping. Okay, so we've reduced immigration. Has that improved your health care? No. Has that improved your emotional well-being? No. Has that brought more love into your life? No. Has that made you rich? No, I haven't noticed that. So that's the kind of thing I mean. When you 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 know we get all waved up as a go blame so and so the ha the Hoosies and the McCoys, right? Yeah, yeah, the Hatfields. The Hatfields and the McCoys. They were tr uh, they were feuding for I don't know a generations. Set, generations without even knowing why. Did that make any of them happier, richer, safer? No, no. Now another piece of evidence. Larby says before a person is a friend. Something must first be honest with him because honesty is everything. That is so true. You cannot be real friends if you're not honest with each other and with yourself. Mm -hmm. So now, another important piece of evidence. Ta-da, 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 ta-da. Our show is yeah. getting more and more likes and loves. Well, uh, wouldn't you say... I may not be right about everything, but I sure as heck am honest. I'm honest about what I see. I'm, I don't shrink from what I see because I'm afraid. And I'm honest about myself. And more and more people are liking our show. So I'm going to take that as another thumbs up to self-honesty and honesty. What do you think? Yeah, that's a definite sign. Yeah. So I can't believe we're almost out of time already. In fact, we are out of time. So I was going to ask you, what about you? What have your favorite? So you're going to have to think about this between now and Wednesday. What are your favorite delusions that you don't want to be honest about? Mm -hmm. Tammy gives us some thumbs, thumbs up. up. Yes. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. Thank you. What have your favorite lies been? Are you seeing that they are not true? And how are you reacting to those realizations? Todd says, yes, you are. And I think he means getting more and more. Oh, yes, I am honest and self-honest. So I don't know whether I'm going to continue this conversation on Wednesday or not. But in any case, I want, because it depends on where things are at on Wednesday, what, what needs to be talked about. But I want you to think about those questions. What lies or self-lies or lies that about the world have you have been your favorites? What are those consequences? Are you seeing that they are not true? And how are you reacting to those realizations? And Helen, God bless her has already answered the question. I can be critical and think it will work. Wow, Helen, that is the truth. It doesn't mean that we should be dishonest. If you think I'm scratching myself, I am, because I've broken out into this terrible rash. But anyway, um, so Todd said honest, that is. Yeah, that's what he meant, that yes, I am honest. And Tammy said slowly getting back my joy. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that, honey. So let's all think about that for ourselves. And maybe we'll talk about it on a Wednesday. But even if we're not, let's talk to ourselves and each other about it between now and then. And we have a discussion group on the Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. 
which you, the first time you come, you can come for free. Yes. And Beth will be guiding the discussion. So if you'd like to bring that topic into the group, it's going to be discussed. It's the, the program is called Growth. I wonder why. And we also have a free discussion group every Saturday morning called the, the Living with Reality Study Group. And it's based on a book that I've written that is full of self-honesty and honesty. And I think you might like it. And it's on my website, bethgreen.org. And it's free. It, and that's honest. It really is free. And then you get to go to a free discussion group. Uh, and all the information about that is on the post. And Larby said, before it is too late, we must be honest with ourselves first in any first step. And yes. I couldn't agree with you more. And Amy said, my lie is that I'll find a man and he'll fix my financial problems. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good one, Amy. So we better get off the air because we are way overdue. But I have so enjoyed being with you tonight. And I love your comments. And I love you. And oh, my God, look at all the likes and loves we already have. You see? More and more. Of course, it's not hundreds of likes and loves at this moment. But whatever, it's more than it used to be. And I am going to, I don't think I'm lying. I think a lot of us are sick of the lies. And we don't want to tell any more lies to ourselves either and have to stomach it and feel and know we're lying inside. So mwah, I love you. And we'll find out on Wednesday what's coming up Wednesday. Yes, indeed. Okay. So stay tuned. Okay. So Bye for now. Like, love, share, like our page, follow us, share these videos with people who won't like it. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs>